shaft and the counter shaft rebuild complete. So from where we left off yesterday, we got the car in the air, we got a ton of things done. We removed the front wheel drive transmission and we put in the all wheel drive one. As you can see, the subframe slash cradle, whatever you would like to call it, is no longer in the car. Subframe is actually over here on the ground and there's two subframes here and there's a reason for that. The front wheel drive one that comes with the RSX is in the front here and the all wheel drive one that we're using from a CRV is actually here. Uh, if you look, one of the things that's kind of important to note is the location of uh, where the engine mounts go. Uh, on the front wheel drive one, this is where the engine mount would be, and on the all wheel drive one, because of the change in the transmission, this is where it's going to be. And this uses an innovative mount um, that we have here that's gonna mount to the transmission with a specific bracket that we're gonna be getting that'll get, uh, get the transmission in place as well as the transfer case. So going back to the rear of the car, actually, we have been getting everything kind of mocked up and in place. We have the bracketry that's being used for the differential setup. It goes from the front to the rear to brace the entire rear subframe piece here. And then we're gonna cut a section out of the differential, well, a section out for the differential. And Brett and Brian have conveniently gotten everything out of the way, marked it up, and we're about to make that cut and uh, get it up in its first test. So I wanted to go over a little bit what you have to do on the inside of this car to make it all-wheel drive. Um, the DC5 chassis is a lot less real estate to have a drive shaft go through 
exhaust tunnel as opposed to like a Civic. So what we had to do is we had to make a piece of sheet metal and make a curve on it and it's only an eighth inch thick so we had to support uh, the bottom of it to make this e-brake not wobble. Uh, we wanted to put the e-brake handle in the same spot that it used to be in so if he wants to put a center console back together he can do that. So all, all in all it worked really good. We had to move the e-brake cables up quite a bit. The e-brake cables used to be about six inches lower. The bracket we had to bend a little bit to make it work, uh, to make it sit flat. So it looks really good, it turned out nice. So I mentioned that the sheet metal that we use is pretty thin, it's like an eighth inch. So we had to make bracing. We used probably a quarter inch uh, flat stock and just put rib nuts in it to make it more supportive. These are just for the center console, so those don't need to be supported well, but this is the e-brake cable mount, and then this is the e-brake mount, and then this is the shifter mount in the rear, because there used to be like a, a gusset right here that held the frame together that we had to cut out, so we took a lot of the support of this uh, exhaust tunnel out, so these plates really, really help a lot. So when you look at the bottom of this, you can see that the floor used to be right here. So this is what I was talking about when we made a, a, a tunnel with the sheet metal. And then we just drilled some holes in the side and made the e-brake cables run through these holes. They used to be right here. And then this is the support that holds the e-brake cables on the inside. Just wanted a quick overview of the rear end. We got the CRV trailing arms here. And when you use these, the shock isn't the same as the RSX when it comes to the bolt diameter. I had to take these bushings out of the lower shock and put them on the lathe and make the hole on the inside drill it out bigger so that a bigger bolt fits in here. So that was one of the differences with that. Um, the other difference is you have to swap bolts that hold the lower uh, spindle onto the trailing arm because those are different as well. This rear one stays the same but this this front bolt is different. Another thing that we had to do is use CRV caliper brackets and RSX calipers to utilize the stock e-brake. Um, on the CRV, the e-brake is actually shoes inside a rotor instead of the caliper locking up the pads. So with the rear diff, you have to cut the floor out a little bit where the spare tire would be. So we cut a square in here and made a piece of sheet metal round and used the same method as we did with the fuel cell in our last video. So this rear diff needs this brace on the top and then it uses this Hub City Performance brace on the rear. And the Hub City Performance on a DC5 chassis is a lot less work than it would be for like a Civic because you don't have to cut out this whole like, factory brace. You just have to drill holes in it for it to sandwich together and fit the control arms. Um, we don't have the control arms yet, but we do need to get new control arms for the rear to the trailing arms. So we found that they're a little bit different, so we have to use spherical bushings on the inside for the, the taper that these CRV trailing arms um, have. They're not flat like the RSX, so the control arm doesn't sit perfect on the rear. So that's one thing that you have to consider when you get this kit.
Javier supplied us with the rear differential for the RSX all-wheel drive project. Um, when he got the differential, it was a used differential, as most of them are, because it came out of an early Honda wagon. Um, he was unsure of the condition internally of the differential, so when we received it, we used it for mock-up to get the mount and the brace all welded in place, and then I went ahead and removed it. We disassembled the differential to basically an inspection, just to make sure that the bearings were all intact and good. Um, all the gear facings looked okay, and that it was in proper working order before we went ahead and put a bunch of horsepower through it. Uh, when it was apart, we BD blasted the cases and got them coated so that way uh, it's nice, aesthetic looking, and clean for the installation. Uh, we assembled the differential, installed it back in the car. After we installed the differential, we went ahead and filled it with HPL gear oil and it's ready to go. All right, man. First drive, all-wheel drive complete. Can't believe we're here already. I know, dude. You ready to do this? Yes, sir. All right, man.